Welcome back everybody. Uh, in the last video I showed how to create a mashup between sales data and temperature data that I got off of the web that shows me how products sell, how well they perform in terms of sales uh, at the, according to the temperature being experienced by the customers uh, at the date of sale, at the location of sale. And uh, that was working pretty well and uh, showing me different things, but I mentioned last time that it isn't quite right yet because it's just showing me raw sales amount and uh, I don't really know, for instance, in particular, whether um, it's, you know, how many different types of days I have. So for instance, I might have a lot more hot days in my data or a lot less than I do cold days, for instance. So. Uh, it might not be showing me that my products sell better when it's a particular temperature. It might just be showing me that I have a lot more days of, of a particular temperature in my sales data. So what I'm going to do is create a DAX calculated measure. And I'm going to show you this, my first example of that. I'm going to show you creating one of those that will give me a quantity sold per day as opposed to a uh, regular old sales amount. So um, the first step here, I'm just going to take the sales amount field out uh, and I'm going to switch to another field as a starting point, uh, the order quantity field. And I'm only doing this because some of the examples I made for the next part use quantity instead of sales amount, but it's the same sort of thing. And so here we go, I've got a sum of order quantity and now um, I want to do that, uh, create a version of that that is order quantity per day. And here in the power pivot ribbon on the Excel side, I have this button. It says New Measure. And I launch that. And this is the dialog where I can define a new calculated field for the pivot table. And uh, so the first thing it asks me is table name. And uh, this is, I call this picking your home table for your measure. And really, the, the rule of thumb here is that you pick the table for, to be your home table that contains your numerical field, the field that you're performing your aggregations on. And in that case, in this particular case, the field we're using is the order quantity field, and that's in the fact internet sales table. Um, if you're a BI pro, then the way to think of this is that this is almost always going to be your fact table. There are probably some really advanced scenarios we might get into later uh, where I would set it to be something other than my numeric or my fact table, but I'd say that in 99%, if not more, of cases, you're going to set this to be your numeric, aka fact table. Uh, we can give it a name, and uh, that name is just going to be, because in the end I'm just going to be adding another checkbox to my field list. So I can give it a name, and let's call it quantity per day. And then this is where I type the formula. And it's a lot like adding a formula in the Power Pivot window. Again, it's the DAX formula language. It's very Excel-like, but there are a few different few different uh, rules and a few different things you can do. Uh, the first thing that we, first rule to call out is that you don't just put columns in here. You put, uh, you have to have, everything always has to be wrapped in an aggregation function. Um, this is not a row by row calculation. Everything in a, in a measure is an aggregation. So if you put just a regular um, column name in here, it's going to give you, it's going to give you an error. So uh, I'm going to take the, I'm just trying to get the total amount of sales quantity divided by the number of days. So the first thing I'm going to do is just do sum of, and because I'm in the fact internet sales table, that's my home table here, then I get autocomplete by default against the fact internet sales table. So I just, yeah, there we go, order quantity. Okay, that's my numerator. And then for my denominator, it's a little bit more uh, complicated and a little bit more uh, magical, powerful. Uh, so I'm going to use the count rows function. And I'm going to be counting the rows in a table that I actually create on the fly. And the, I'm going to create a table sort of in memory as we go using this distinct function. And I'm going to take the distinct values, again, of the order, uh, not the order quantity, but the order date key. So the order date key is, there's one of those, uh, it's actually, it's unique per day, although there might be multiple sales in the fact table for each, each day. At least we hope that we sell more than one per day. Uh, and I'm, gonna sh I'm just showing you this formula here, uh, and then I'm going to explain in the next video exactly what's going on here. I think it's a lot easier 
to digest it if you see it first, and then I can kind of break it apart in detail in the next in the next video. So I'm gonna do the order date key. So I'm getting all of the I'm getting a, um, a single column table of all of the distinct dates, uh, and then I'm gonna count the number of rows in that table, and that's gonna give me the number of dates, the number of days involved here, and that will be my my the denominator that I want. So I'll go ahead and hit enter and it's going to add that measure and I hit an error. Now I I, uh, I paused my recording and my I was gonna edit this out but I think actually on second thought it makes a lot of sense. This is a, an error that a mistake that uh, we can all learn from. So it turns out that there are a number of functions, it's actually not that many, but when you're writing measures there are a few functions that actually require, this is true I think in V1, it might not be true in the future, but for now are going to require that you instead of uh, just using a column name and I know this this column order date key is from the fact internet sales table and that's sort of the rule especially in calculated columns I can use just the column name when I'm in the same table uh, it's quite a convenience now but there are certain functions and distinct is one of the handful they're all I believe aggregation functions um, that or at least they're functions that you would use only in measures typically and the, these functions require that, that you actually have the full table name as well as the column name. So it's fact internet sales that we need to add here. So it's the same formula, I just have to be more explicit with the, the name of the column and specify what table it comes from. Hit OK, and now I can add it to my pivot table. Aha, now that's what I'm looking for. This is, the, this is actually telling me what I want to know, which is how well products are selling in a relative basis to each other and to to themselves in different temperature ranges. So, um, yeah, this is what I'm, I'm looking for. I know that I haven't explained it, uh, sort of the, the magic behind the DAX measure, quite uh, as well as I should so far. And that's exactly why I have part two coming up. So, see you for part two. Thank you very much.